Hello, my name is Conrad and I'm That Vegan Chemist. In this episode, I wanted to talk about fruit ripening and uh, what actually goes on from a chemistry perspective. Uh, I personally go through 20 bananas a day. It's my typical. I'll also include greens too because I want to make sure to get minerals and stuff. Not that you can't get them from bananas, but I like to get my greens in as well. Um, anyway, um, if you buy bananas many times when you actually purchase them, uh, they'll be green, which they pull them off while they're still on the plant, and the transition from the green color, which is chlorophyll, actually you notice the transition from it going from green to yellow. When you physically see this change, the plant, when it's green, has all this chlorophyll in it, and it also has methionine. Methionine is a sulfur-containing amino acid, and um, it's also important in protein synthesis. Um, it is, um, the methionine's converted to SAM, which is S, um, adenosylmethionine through uh, SAM synthase. Um, I'm just going to give you the general overview. This might be too, too much information for everyone, but just so you kind of understand what's going on. Um, SAM is then converted to ACC, which is uh, uh, amino cyclopropane carboxylate through uh, ACC synthase and then it is then finally converted into ethylene. Um, ethylene is created through the process of ACC oxidase and uh, ethylene is that, that gas that's actually um, in the bananas. So like if you open a big container of bananas and you have the plastic around it, the moisture and the, the gas that's actually formed in there actually helps to start the ripening process itself. Bananas are, in particular are really uh, hot, they're high producers of ethylene and they actually can help escalate any other fruits that you have, you need them to ripen as well because they are a major creator of, of ethylene. Um, kiwi are less, um, they don't produce as much, but if you need them to ripen a little bit faster, you can put a banana near there and it'll actually speed the process along. Now, once ethylene is produced, it actually um, is an important factor to determine how a plant is going to actually ripen. Um, the ethylene metabolism is a major focus in biochemical um, research into fruit behavior. and. Uh, when you see the ethylene is finally produced, um, enzymes actually start to also be created within the plant to actually start to ripen the plant. You actually notice that the starches that are in the plant when it's green and chlorophyll actually start to be broken down. And when they start to get broken down, they start being made into sugars. The pectin is actually starting to be broken down. So you actually notice that the fruit many times is really hard, which is pectin, and that the enzymes actually help to start break down the pectin. So you actually started noticing the softer texture. So you, you know, everyone goes and they look at fruit and they're trying to see if it's ripe or not. You see them kind of squishing it, like is it squishy? Is it fruit? Is it fruity right now? That you're actually testing to see if the pectin's actually where it needs to be to be consumed. Now it's really important that when you're eating fruit that you want the methionine to actually be broken down, which is why it's very essential that you want your plant to actually be broken down so that methionine can go through the chemical process of SAM synthase, ACC synthase, and then ACC oxidase to produce the ethylene to actually produce the ripening process thoroughly. So when I eat bananas, you can have them be yellow like this, which is where most people actually eat their bananas, but for me, I don't like to eat my bananas until they're actually spotty, which means that they are physically ripe and they are starting to decompose. They're not bad now, it's just you know for a fact that the whole process of ripening has finished and it's actually like on its way out. So you'd rather eat it here to ensure that the methionine is out of the fruit than actually consuming it while there is still a small portion of it. Um, you can... It, probably is going to impact you, but over time you, you might develop some sen um, sensitivities to bananas, um, especially unripened bananas that are only yellow and they're not spotty. 
Um, this process is also seen in uh, um, fruits like apples that you'll notice green apples um, when they're picked will actually start to change color as they ripen. Uh, there's many different brands of apples. I'm not saying green apples are terrible. It's just they are less popular than the sweeter red variety, but the green ones are generally more acidic, more bitter, and uh, the process of them being that way is they kind of are a unripened fruit. So the very fact of them being acidic means that there is, it hasn't actually been producing the ethylene to actually create the ripened fruit. So we've created a, a species of uh, apple that is acidic and has a lot of chlorophyll, but it hasn't really gone through the process of ripening. So, um, the ripening actually helps to create a more neutral pH, so it's not as acidic, creates more sugar, there's going to be less chlorophyll, less pectin, and also, the more that the plant actually breaks down, the more it creates aromatic compounds, which are cyclical compounds that actually create that aroma, that really nice smell, many chemicals um, that you find in general when they have an aromatic ring they actually have a fragrance which is where that word comes from so anyway I hope this has been informative I'm sure it's been a lot of information to throw at you guys um, I would really like your perspective to see if if you liked it or if it was too much um, because I, I don't know I think a lot of people on YouTube they don't really want to get too deep into things, but I think it's about time that we maybe grow up a little bit and actually know what the heck is going on around us. So anyway, uh, I will talk to you later and have a good one. Bye.